I'm in a Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo 4, going to do a little bit of off-roading. Does hilarity ensue? <laughs> well, find out. Porsche seems to have something for everyone, if you have the cash. It builds world-class sports cars and roomy family SUVs, plenty of powertrains too, flat boxer engines, hybrids, plug-in hybrids, even full EVs, like this Taycan 4 Cross Turismo. No gas, no sound, just the push of instant torque, it's what electric vehicles do best. Cross Turismo models get a more useful wagony hatchback rear end than the sedan, perfect for that slice of the moneyed market that are in a hurry to get the chores done, emission free. Porsche is famous for having all sorts of variants within its models. Cross Turismo 4 occupies a unique slot in the Taycan lineup. Its dual motor, by far the least expensive way to get all-wheel drive in a Porsche EV. And compared to the base Taycan sedan, which is rear drive only, this is more powerful, it's more practical, and it costs less. It starts at around $99,000, at least that includes shipping. This one is an excellent build, modestly equipped with $3,100 chalk paint, the $5,900 premium package, an $1,800 off-road design package that includes protective diffusers, plus upgraded wheels, seats, sound system, and adaptive cruise control. It comes in just under 113 large, not bad for a Porsche. Here's another big difference between the Taycan sedan and the Cross Turismo right here, the cargo area. It's much more practical. Starting with the opening, this is much bigger, easier to get large things in here. The security shades give it the same privacy as a sedan. As you can see, the very solid pieces pop off without a hitch to take on a little extra cargo. And there are all sorts of small accoutrements in the boots that up the usability. I love these elastic straps. All cars should have them. Order this two plus one seating configuration and it adds 40, 20, 40 split functionality. In max cargo mode, there are 43 cubic feet to fill, about average. Seats up, Porsche's specs say the rear luggage space is increased by only 1.3 cubic feet over the sedan or 16 cubes. It's due to German testing methods. In practice, it's much larger and usable. I got four packs in the sedan. The Cross Turismo is up by 50%, taking on a half dozen. It's good for another bundle of the two-ply here that's three cubic feet. I suggest storing the supplied charge cord here instead because you can mooch off your friend's power and chances are they don't expect you to bring your own TP. Cross Turismos only come with the larger of Porsche's battery packs, rated at 93.4 kilowatt hours. No skimping there. Its dual motor setup makes up to 469 horsepower and 368 pound-feet of torque using overboost power with launch control. It weighs 5,000 pounds or 2,277 kilos. As long as you have the fob in your pocket or purse, just sit down in the Taycan and it switches on automatically. There is a button, it's mounted on the outboard side because this is a Porsche. Uh, you can turn it off this way if you feel more comfortable. Taycans use a unique rear-mounted two-speed transmission. The controller has the feel of a steel ingot. The dampers are adjustable, that's standard, so is an air suspension. The ground clearance is already 20 millimeters higher than the sedan. The off-road package hikes the normal ground clearance by 20 millimeters. Max ground clearance is 7.75 inches, nearly 200 millimeters. Drive settings include gravel mode for improved off-road performance, range mode for efficiency, and sport mode because, well, come on, this is a Porsche. The instrument cluster doesn't have a hood to shield it from the sun. It doesn't need one. And if the roads in your neighborhood are particularly nasty, a GPS-enabled lift can be set to raise the car automatically. Just so you know, Cross Turismo 4 is about 100 horsepower shy and a second slower from 0 to 60 than Cross Turismo 4S. Still, this one at 4.8 seconds, according to Porsche, is no slouch. 
Keep in mind that EVs always feel faster than they are, and Porsche underestimates its performance numbers. So this thing feels really quick. I've driven nearly every EV, and sure, three seconds zero to 60 sprints are fun. But in real life, the four cross Turismo's kind of velocity is more than enough. And again, Porsche makes many variants, including a Taycan Turbo and Turbo S if you have a need for speed. This is not equipped with the Porsche Sport sound, so there's nothing artificial coming into the cabin. Hit the throttle, and all you're hearing is the electric motors. Pure stuff. Sounds good. Typically, the two-speed transmission is completely transparent. It's heard more than felt, but you have to be listening carefully. Find an empty curvy road like this, throw this into Sport Plus, lower the suspension, and the Cross Turismo 4 is wicked fun. And remember, batteries that are heavy are in the floor, so the center of gravity is super low. The lower riding Sport Turismo and Taycan sedan have the edge for on pavement shenanigans, add rear wheel steering, and things sharpen up even more. Cross Turismo is a good balance though, and the price is low, you know, for a Porsche EV. The driving dynamics and ride quality of the Cross Turismo 4 are very impressive. It's comfortable, but this will carve this road up without any issues at all. That's hard to do at the same time. And because it's silent, Taycan doesn't call attention to itself when you're pushing it. Try that in a 911. As for range, I can't count how many times I've said real world numbers are different from estimates, none more glaring than Porsche, in a good way. The EPA rates this Taycan's range at 215 miles. I'm seeing closer to 270. Porsche always underestimates its range. It's one of the great EV mysteries. I'm not driving this easy either. Part of the efficiency comes from freewheeling or sailing. Taycan will coast nearly forever on flat pavement. Remember that Porsche does not offer a one pedal driving dynamic. It feels that when you're really driving hard, you're in better control when you're actually using the brake pedal and I find that to be true. However, a lot of people drive this in the city and a one pedal dynamic would be kind of nice to have. Porsche, maybe think about offering it. There is an enhanced recuperation mode in the menu, but the regen drag isn't close to other EVs. Even so, nearly all stopping power is done with recuperation, but using the brake pedal to engage it. Dip into the physical binders. And modulation is perfect with excellent control, what you'd expect from the brand. Visibility in the Cross Turismo is pretty darn good. No real blind spots. There is optional blind spot warning and adaptive cruise control on this car. Now for $600 more, you'd get Porsche's InnoDrive, which is their semi-autonomous driving package. I think it's worth it. I mean, you're already spending, what, north of $110,000? What's 600 bucks? Easy for me to spend other people's money. I do love the forward view of the fender bulge. It's like looking at the hips of a supermodel, uh, male or female, take your pick. I don't judge. All right, we've seen what this does on-road. Let's do a little off-roading. This access road is rougher than it appears on camera, but hardly Moab-like terrain. Come on, wealthy folk are smart enough to avoid damaging a $113,000 vehicle. The seven and three quarters inch ground clearance is useful here. The protective diffusers really work, keeping a good amount of rocks from chipping the optional paint. Hey, it was $3,100. If you're looking for a luxury EV, one that has performance chops, this actually does double duty for the owner that wants to go explore the good mountain biking trails. It'll get you there. Keep in mind that adding bikes on racks will drop range considerably. Aerodynamics are critical when it comes to EV efficiency, all EVs. For extreme conditions, Jeep Grand Cherokee or Wrangler 4xe plug-in hybrids might be a better electrified choice. Completely different animals though, maybe a Rivian R1S.
Porsche introduced 800 volt EV charging, and at 350 kilowatt terminals, Taycan can juice from 5 to 80 percent in around 22 minutes in ideal conditions. Those are not as popular as 150 kilowatt units, these are becoming quite common. At home, using 240 volt level 2, Taycan fully charges in around 10 hours. That's done with the port on the driver's side. I believe that EV ownership only works well when you can charge where you sleep. DC fast charging is done on the passenger side. Taycan supports plug and charge, meaning there are no credit cards or apps to deal with. You just plug the car in, the system recognizes your vehicle, and it bills you automatically. No fuss, no muss. And Porsche throws in three years of free Electrify America charging, which would be great if this terminal worked. Once again, it's out of order. I have had this experience before. I will have this experience again. The cones aren't a good sign. I've tried all available cables. And nope, not gonna work. I've tried it like five or six times. I've even tried the app. It's why people like the supercharger network. If you travel a lot, it's pretty seamless. Most people charge at home, some 80 to 85%. But if you do a lot of traveling, make sure you scope out the charging network before you buy. The BMW next to me is fully charged, but the owner has not returned and the cable is locked. I contact a very friendly Electrify America service rep. So can you tell me how you're trying to get the charger started? We try multiple times in vain. Charging start error once again. After 30 minutes of troubleshooting, the i3 finally releases its death grip. I can now unplug this woman's. I will plug in here. Fingers crossed. Okay, welcome driver. Oh, it's working. Success. I do show that it did start in here too, so that's... A it is actually charging. This should not be so hard. I didn't need to charge. I was only going to demonstrate plug and charge, but we can all imagine scenarios where this would leave drivers stranded. A good time to point out that charging etiquette means getting back to your car to free up a cable that others might want to use and never park at a terminal if you aren't charging, ever. And to be fair about the experience, the agent was top notch. Uh, I appreciate your patience and uh, thank you for calling on your phone there Okay. Take care. The interior is much the same on all Taycans. This being a Porsche, you can spend thousands of dollars upgrading it with things like colored seat belts for 660 bucks or a second touchscreen for the passenger that would go here. That's in the $5,300 technology package. But minimally equipped, this one is inviting on the whole. For a car this expensive, there's a little more blatant plastic than I would prefer, even if it's good quality. Many are from recycled materials. It's easy to configure the gauge cluster to your liking. A lot of the controls are haptic touchscreen and generally they work great, crisp and clear too, the camera angle doesn't show it. This glass roof is standard on Cross Turismo. The Bose sound system is better than expected, rich and punchy. Door pockets are on the small side, but lined to keep rattles down, same here. Like all Tycons, I find this lid frustrating. It's hard to use while driving. The touchscreen interface is configurable and responsive to your digits, plus the voice commands are quite good. The whole waterfall center console design is inspired by the 918 Spider. if you didn't snag one of those. Again, the camera angle washes out the look. It's very clear. Apple Music and Spotify integration is built in. You can connect your account and stream without a phone. There's also wireless CarPlay, and yes, Porsche now offers Android Auto integration. So compared to the Taycan sedan, what's the advantage to the Cross Turismo's roofline? Uh, more headroom. Yeah? How much? Well, we're both five foot nine. Let me check. The verdict is, wow, that much. That's significantly more in the sedan passengers will be much happier in the Cross Turismo. Need leg room, that's good. Foot room, a little bit on the tight side. At least the cushions are high enough so that thigh sport is excellent. 
Door openings are a little bit on the small side if you're always getting car seats in and out, yeah, but it's doable. Door pockets also kind of small, at least they're lined like the fronts. My pet peeve, of course, no pockets on the seat backs, either of them. There are adjustable vents, spend a little bit more money, and you can get a separate climate zone back here. There are a couple USB ports mounted in the seats. A lot of EVs have completely flat floors. Tycon has quite a spine here, meaning if you have three adults back here, foot room is going to be kind of tight. Many Tycons have a console here. There's only seating for two. This one seating for three, so you do have a place for a refreshing beverage. And in an emergency, you can put three adults here. Wouldn't want to do that an awful lot, but you can. A quick comment on design. Call it a hatchback, a wagon, or a low-slung SUV. Cross Turismo styling proves functionality can come in a svelte form factor. Personally, I prefer the Tycon sedan styling, a skosh, and fundamentally the two models share the front panels. However, the practical Midwest raised boy in me gravitates towards the added usefulness of the Cross Turismo or Sport Turismo that gets the same body style, just oriented towards performance. Some think this is a Panamera, but these are people who don't know Porsche builds EVs. Uh, speaking of, 40% of Taycan buyers are new to Porsche, and the buyers skew younger. It's what every car company dreams of. Time for red light, green light. Green lights. Taycan 4 Cross Turismo is the value leader in Porsche's EV lineup, plain and simple. The overall Taycan greatness is enhanced by the Cross Turismo's hatch design. It adds passenger and cargo room. Even with the raised ride height, it slings through tight turns with Porsche confidence, excellent driving dynamics. Range and charge speed are excellent for road trippers. Yellow lights, even with its more practical form factor, Cross Turismo isn't overly spacious for its size. It's good for moderate off-roading, but do you really want to do that at this price? There are many storage cubbies, all of them fairly small or a little awkward. Red lights. Nice car, but it should be for 113 grand, and it's far from fully kitted out. Some options seem overpriced. Uh, looking at you, $660 colored seat belts. And while I understand why it doesn't offer an aggressive one-pedal driving setup, what's the harm in offering one? Just asking. The lack of a bulletproof charging network? Well, that's not Porsche's fault, but it would be great to see all the automakers join forces to build something like the supercharging network. At the end of the day, the Cross Turismo 4 is a great way to get into a Porsche EV. No, it's not as fast as the 4S, but it's definitely quick enough. It handles really well, it's comfortable, and if you want to tackle some rough stuff, it'll do that too. Plus, there's more room in the back for the carpool gang, more cargo room. Kind of hard to beat this package. You can get much of the same enjoyment and EV dynamics out of a Mustang Mach-E Performance and the upcoming Kia EV6 GT for less money, but there really is something about a Porsche that makes it worth the price of admission. And as tested, this one is the Taycan value leader. If it's not quick and luxurious enough, there are other variants because that is what Porsche does. I know the kinds of efficiency questions you folks might have, so let me address them now. Taycan uses a heat pump for the HVAC system in the US. The vehicle has routing that can shuttle heat directly from the transaxle to the battery or the cabin, whichever needs it most. It can close the radiators to warm the battery. Shut the car down for the night without plugging it in, and it'll shuttle any residual heat to the battery to precondition it as much as possible. It's cool stuff, no pun intended. As always, special thanks to Martin Campbell for driving duties so I can shoot running footage. We're filling up on road food. Gotta love Dairy Queen. We're also at Electrify America. Yeah. And it actually worked this time. <laughs> Only took three terminals though, yeah, three tries. <laughs> three times a charm. Even at this 150 kilowatt station, this juiced from 20 to 80% in some 25 minutes, which was time enough for me to finish my hot fudge sundae. Tycon may cause you to gain weight. This is the end, time for the fun facts. The Cross Turismo 
has a special place in my heart. Those that have followed me for a long time will remember that long before the Taycan became a production vehicle, any Taycan, I was able to travel to Malibu and drive the prototype of the Mission E Cross Turismo. Yeah, I was the very first one in America to drive it, uh, as far as journalists was concerned. If I remember correctly, some of you in the comments thought I looked nervous. Yeah, not really. Yeah, it was a multi-million dollar prototype. But the main thing is, that's the look of concentration. I had to manage all of the GoPros, I had to drive, I had to assess the dynamics of the prototype, all while interviewing Dr. Vekbach. I had about 20, 25 minutes to do that. So really, that is the look of concentration. I would admit if I'm nervous. And I'll link to that story should be popping up here, okay? Thanks for watching. Remember, subscribe to this channel, click notifications. I'm assuming that you enjoyed this piece because you're still here. Follow me on Twitter. I'm very active there. And if you have a question, leave it in the comments, okay? All right. That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.